Hi, I'm Matt Halls of The Happy Show, and I'm here today with a very special video. This video will serve not only as a commentary, not only as a discussion, but even as a review of some of the things that Archie Comic Publications Incorporated has engaged in over the years. There are fair use laws that will allow people to use images and other materials that are copyrighted for the purpose of illustration and clarification and again for discussion and review. I'm using this video to discuss something that happened to me recently. It was a situation where Archie Comic Publications Incorporated decided to mark one of my videos for removal from YouTube claiming copyright infringement. It was a video satire of marketing practices which many comic book publishers in the comic book industry engage in. It also served as a spoof. If you have followed my videos, then you are aware of what I'm talking about. Earlier in 2007, there was an event in the comic book industry that reached the national media outlets. It had to do with the death of Captain America at Marvel Comics. This is not the first time that major publishers have used death as a sales gimmick to market their books. The use of death as a marketing gimmick in the comic book industry is a long tradition. I decided to make my satire using Archie Andrews from Archie Comics because it would deliver home a solid point. It is precisely because the whole ideal, the very notion that Archie Comics would kill off Archie Andrews is so absurd that I chose him to make this point. The use of Archie Andrews served to underscore how ridiculous the whole ideal of using death as a marketing gimmick has become in the industry and to expose the absurdity of it all. In addition, my video served as a spoof of another practice that the comic book industry engages in, one that Archie Comic Publications Incorporated engages in itself, that is, to take long-standing comic book characters and to alter or change something about that character in an attempt to appeal to a newer or younger, fresher audience. A few years ago, Archie Comics Publications Incorporated took their popular character Sabrina, the Teenaged Witch, and altered her to look more like a manga character. That is, the characters as they appear in Japanese comics and in anime, which are Japanese animated movies. More recently, they took the popular characters Betty and Veronica, and they altered their looks so that they look more realistic instead of like their former cartoony-looking selves. I was also making a parody on these sort of changes, and these are the kind of changes that even Archie has engaged in itself. That is why I did such spoofs as... Anime Archie! Archie Goes Emo! And the new Archie! Clearly, clearly these are spoof covers! Even Archie Comic Publications Incorporated has engaged in these sort of practices of altering their characters to appeal to a younger audience. Therefore, I feel my parody was every bit as valid as any other parody. And therefore... I do get to claim fair usage. Now, many of you might be thinking, okay, Matt, your video is still on YouTube. You were allowed to keep it up on YouTube. All you had to do was add the introduction and the ending that stressed that Archie Comics would never kill their characters and that Archie Andrews and his pals are all still alive in Riverdale. So what's the beef? My beef, frankly, is I don't like corporations strong-arming people. And I don't like being accused of any wrongdoing when I have done nothing wrong. Like many other big corporations, Archie Comic Publications Incorporated has used the term copyright infringement as an excuse to trample over the rights of other people while it claims it's protecting its own rights. You are guilty until you prove yourself innocent. Perhaps the one thing that bothers me most, that aside from the fact that they act like I did something wrong when I did not, was that Archie Comic Publications was trying to charge that I was using their characters in an unwholesome manner, particularly because my video, I guess, had to deal with death. It did not portray any of Archie's characters in any kind of manner that was unsavory, lewd, suggestive, or any other negative way other than to say that Reggie accidentally killed Archie due to a misunderstanding. The character of Reggie Mantle is known by anybody who reads Archie comics to be a bully and to antagonize Archie on a regular basis. I do not portray him in a negative light any more than he's portrayed in the comics. He lost his temper and got into a fight with Archie. It's happened in the comics before. In this case, in my parody, 
supposedly he accidentally killed Archie. I would definitely contest any assertion that it was somehow unwholesome. When we talk about unwholesome, I think we should talk about Archie's own history. I will not be showing you any parodies here. This is going to be the real deal. Because I don't know how many of you are aware of these things. So let's go ahead and talk about Archie. Archie Comics has a history of going out of its way to protect its trademarks and copyrights to the point that it sometimes overreaches its boundaries. In 1998, there was a trademark-driven domain dispute between Archie Comics and a two-year-old. David Sams set up a website in honor of his two-year-old daughter, Veronica, called Veronica.org. Archie Comics Company wanted the domain handed over because it holds the trademark on the name Veronica. Archie Comics Publications Incorporated owns the domain names to Veronica.net and Veronica.com, but they did not own the domain name to Veronica.org. That was owned by David and is owned by David Sams. Sam said this on the matter of the dispute with Archie Comics. This is my daughter's first name. What gives them the right to own a first name? There are lots of Bettys and Veronicas before there were Archie Comics. Mike Silberkleit, publisher of Archie Comics, had this to say. We have Veronica.com registered, and these people didn't want to give up the Veronica.org name for some reason. For some reason, because their daughter's name is Veronica. In a letter to Sam's, Archie Comics lawyers Grimes and Battersby wrote, that Sam's use of Veronica.org, quote, infringes ACP's Veronica trademark, end quote. It goes on to ask that Sam's, quote, cease all use of the internet domain Veronica.org and all use of the Veronica trademark, end quote, and to hand over the domain to Archie Comics. Sam's was given a deadline on which to comply. In a letter responding to Grimes and Battersby, Sam's wrote, the Veronica.org name is owned by my one-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Veronica Sams. Should you wish to take legal action, it's going to have to be against a toddler and her parents. Veronica's mother and I have registered this domain through our family-owned company on her behalf to commemorate her birth. I feel like David versus Goliath here, said Sams. It's like, let's go after some little family that can't defend itself. Sam's letter to the company law firm argues that common first names of individuals are not protected by copyright. The category that Veronica is protected by trademark is Class 16 for comic magazines. If my daughter was trying to duplicate your Veronica artwork and or logo, that would clearly be a violation. However, I assure you that it's going to be a few years before she will have the skills necessary to even attempt to design a logo that could be confused with yours. Archie Comics, in light of the exposure by the media, eventually decided to drop the whole matter entirely. Currently, the Veronica.org domain will direct you to the Sam's Direct website, which is still owned by David Sam's. In 2005, Archie Comic Publications Incorporated went after another target. They went after a rock and roll duo, the twin sisters that formed a group known as the Veronicas. Now, the twin sisters did admit that their inspiration for their name, the Veronicas, did come from the Archie Comics character. Now, here's the thing. This is the music industry we're talking about, so you're not in direct competition with them, Archie Comics, so I don't believe there was marketplace confusion in this instance. And where do you stop? I mean, there was a song named Veronica by Elvis Costello back in the late 80s. And what about that TV series from UPN called Veronica Mars? What made you leave them alone? I do understand that there was some agreement reached by the Veronicas and Archie Comics, so at least they were able to patch things up in some manner. Now here's something that's really interesting coming up next. 